What's up, Internet? This is Ramblin' Josh, and you're watching another episode of Let's Play Rain Slick 4. Today we have this jungle full of mutant plant mouths to explore. Also a chest. Thank God we have all those fire spells to use. By which I mean, of course, that we have none. So I'm pretty sure we don't. I really wish I could scroll through these creatures with the R and L buttons, but alas. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we just don't have any fire spells. I mean, Gabe has the oven mitts ability, but I got I got all these things to boost fire spells with, but I don't have any fire spells to boost. It's somewhat strange. That's quite also strange. Um, uh, okay. I guess this is fairly f par for the course in this game. Such strange things going on. This guy doesn't seem to have too much health, so... Well, that kind of hurt. A little bit? I guess it's not too bad. So, just lay on the abilities here. It shouldn't last too long, unless there's some dark secret behind this guy's strategy here. I mean, all things considered, I mean, that blizzard is pretty nasty. That's a lot of experience. Cool treat, huh? Poisonous Life and Regimen. I do not know what you speak of, Hestia. So I guess we have recruited the glasses? Okay, well, what can they do? Well, fire magic for one. Hmm. I guess it's about time Gabriel got his hands on a magic type. So, let's look at his equipment real quick. Roy Orbison. So, I guess it's probably not a matter of we can't use other types of magic uh, weapons, we just don't have anything but orbs for him right now. So what I think I'm going to do is actually switch him out for the uh, Leviathan, so I'll grab... Or, actually no, he doesn't need the Signet Signet, because I'm going to give him the Briquettes. So between that and the fire boost that Gabe gets, uh, that should be pretty effective. Yeah, let's give him back the Signet Signet. So, I learned a few abilities that battle. Cool treat. Ooh, that's handy. Maybe? Poison is life. That's also pretty handy, actually. A regimen. Oh, that's also pretty handy. I'll do some good level ups. So... Let's see what we got here in this here jungle. I feel like there's a lot of opportunities for hidden stuff in this place. So there's some form of caveman over there. I don't even know what that is over there. But I probably want to come this way first. There's a chest. I'm not going to say no to $4,000. And... nothing. Okay. This way we go. Cut. 
a, a glimpse of a couple other chests. So I guess I'll start with this because it doesn't seem like there's anything else in this direction. That is a moose. That moose has a lot of H or uh, yeah, HP. I guess that's a good way to start out. But it's the fake cigar. Clutch call going here. Uh, just have him continue de de to defend, reduce incoming damage a little bit here. Get some AoE going. So... That's what I want to aim for. I wonder if Fake Cigar stacks. I kind of doubt it, but you never know. Seems like a good idea to get a bleed on that moose, just because it has so much HP. He is a mustache man! Okay. Oh, I used Blizzard already. And let us see how much Inferno does. Why does he only have one MP? Didn't he? I feel like he should have two for some reason, but whatever. That was pretty effective. I'm a fan of that. So I guess there's nothing left but to take him down. So, Mr. Mustache, Grouchifon, I'm just going to call him Mr. Mustache, I'm not going to be able to remember that name. Switch? Interesting. I'm not sure how you upgrade the quality of that. Oh, okay. So they switch with a certain amount of MP. That's an interesting item. That might come very much in handy, actually. Seems like something that would add a lot of depth to the battle system. I feel like these guys look familiar. That is fun! So... Big Cigar... Clutch Call... Defend... I think... I will transfer some MP to Grochafon. That should let him cast his Inferno next turn. So getting that up a little bit quicker should be handy. Continue to defend. I'm honestly not even sure how effective it is, but I just, I'm really good, or uh, I, I'm a really big fan of the concept at least of having this ability to partially defend all allies by having him defend. Yeah, that worked out pretty well. I am a fan of this strategy. It can stay. So I thought I saw a chest over here. Indubitably. Axe machine? Oh, that's... It, okay. Sure. More strength? Does he have 500 strength? Or attack, I suppose. That's rather impressive. Actually, I'm curious. Does this guy have orb mastery? No. Interesting. So he comes with a weapon that we don't have a mastery for. That's somewhat strange. I guess... I'm not really sure what the purpose of an orb is. It seems like it gives a lot of... attack... Seems kind of counterintuitive for a magic type. I'm sure there's probably monsters that could take advantage of that, but Mr. Mustache here does not seem to be one of them, as far as I can tell. Skull Bloom! I don't know what that means. Okay, and stick with our tried and true 
strategy. I guess it's not that tried and true. We've only done it like once. It's slowly adjusting the strategy over the last couple battles, but it seems to be working out for us. I wish I could just defer his turn a little bit. I feel like I'm gonna want to heal someone, but I guess maybe I could interrupt. Wow. Interrupting these guys is extremely effective. Anyways, Inferno. And I'll bleed the skull. And heal the Scream Cone. Hmm, not very effective. I sure like attacking Mr. Scream Cone here. Does he have any 1 MP? He does have a few 1 MP abilities, including a Fireball, which given the briquettes and the... well, all the fire passives, fire boosting passives he has, it seems like it would be pretty effective. Yeah, for a 1 MP attack, that's pretty ridiculous. Of course, that's after that said 1 MP attack has been boosted by uh, fake cigar hair, but it's still quite impressive. I'm sorry to say, Mr. Skill. You did. Hug everybody. Heals all allies. That could be very handy. I've been wanting a proper AoE heal for a while. I do have the Scream Cones... Oh, that's an actual battle, not a map decoration. I do have the Scream Cones Flavor Wave, I believe it's called. But that's kind of weak, and... Uh, other words. Right, I forgot it. I knew Scorn Strike now. I gotta start making better use of that. Um, so yeah, I know Flavor Wave, but that doesn't quite function the way I would like, just because the amount of healing it does it doesn't seem especially high, and also, of course, it hurts the Scream Cone. He has a lot of health for some reason, so he can typically take the hit just fine, but it's a, something to consider anyways. I actually feel like it might be pertinent to try and get the Mr. Mustache here some type of weapon which increases his speed a little bit. But that's a concern for another day. There's a chest down here, so I might as well go for this. Settling into a bit of a groove here. The inclusion of Groshapon has made this party significantly stronger, I feel. Even before that, we were starting to get up to uh, pretty powerful levels here. Now the Gabe's team has caught up in level a little bit. We are still somewhat lacking in interrupts, though. I mean, we have them. They're just a little bit hard to get. I don't even know how much damage that Inferno is honestly doing. Because, like, it's just overwritten by... Because the, the text that pops up says super effective, that's so big. I, like, can't even see what half of it says. I'm assuming it's doing about 2,000 damage when it's super effective, though. Secret Stash. I like some abilities from my vendor. The first item vendor rare, er, vendor uses in combat is free. Interesting. And another switcher. Also interesting. 
So just refresh my memory of how this map goes so far. So it came down here. Okay. I do like how they've done the maps in the Penny Arcade games, uh, Zeboid that is. Uh, much more compared to their previous titles, just because they're, they seem so much easier to navigate. And that is a Cthulhu Lion, which is so many levels of amazing that I don't even know. I'm just really glad that's a thing. You can stay, Cthulhu Lion. You can stay. I wonder if that tentacle animation is reused from Cthulhu Saves the World. I imagine it is, but probably touched up a little bit. Inferno! Guess I should get a bleed on the Cthulhu Lion. Uh, let's go with the Flavor Wave. And thus the cold one on Scream Cone here. That actually healed a pretty decent amount. I might have speaking too soon when I was talking down on the uh, Flavor Wave earlier. Well, this guy's pretty dead. Axe Master! Unfortunately, despite being a strength type, he is a magic user, so that doesn't really do anything for him. That appears to be the way forward. So let's not go that way yet. Because I'm sure there is treasure to be had elsewhere. Such as up here. Vague pamphlet. So is that an accessory? It is. Um, do I have anyone not using anything? Would the vague pamphlet be better on him? I feel like the speed... Speed seems really important in this type of game just because of the way the battle system works with the little meter at the top. Okay, so that is what we are up against. Where's fake cigar? There it is. And... Cool treat! It seems kind of strange that we're giving a cool treat to our fellow who is prep prepping to do like massive am amounts of fire damage. Maybe it's just me. Continue defending. Inverno! Ba -ba -ba. Interrupt that guy with our attack. Lucky healing, huh? Well, luckily these guys are pretty much at full health anyways. But just for posterity, we'll kill them off. Don't have to worry about the healing quite so much now. I mean, he could just heal himself, but it doesn't heal so much that it's going to be especially effective on a single person. Down he goes. Okay, so that seems to be about it for this screen. So now we take on the giant frog. That's what I thought was going to happen. Another party member? Just throwing the things at us. I guess with the switcher item in hand, it kind of makes sense that they would want to expand our party a little bit. Oh, it's level 20. So... Let's look at its equipment first. So it appears to be a defense type. Or an armor type? No, defense type. Let me max taunts. Hmm, so a proper taunt. That's kind of weird. Huh. 
That's an interesting ability. I guess that he might be a good candidate for the uh, Undeath Charm, considering that passive that increases their damage when he's dead, but at the same time, I don't really feel like I have much place in my team for him. If I need a really good tank again, he would probably perform a lot better than the Scream Cone does. But still. Darkness Heart, huh? Should probably get that checked out. So, we have increased strength this battle, apparently. But, we are going to continue to go for the magic approach, because... Really, the only monster we have on either team that has any significant amount of strength is Mr. Beaks here. I mean, I guess that makes some amount of sense, just because... High attack creatures are kind of boring. Well, they don't have to be, I guess, but they just oftentimes are. I think rather than applying a bleed, I will... Attack and save up some MP. And maybe go with the Flavor Wave. Vendor and Mr. Beaks could use a heal, it would appear. So, that is what we're gonna do. Try and take out some of these gerbils. Now let's bleed the Darkness Heart. Oh, I do not have enough MP for that ability. Mr. Beaks took a pretty unfortunate attack, but... This guy is low enough on health that I'm sure we'll manage just fine. And thankfully, the uh, Deep Crow, or whatever it's called, continues to attack without him. Deep Crow Matriarch. So anyways, uh, with that, I think that's a good enough place to leave it here for today. So we will continue our way through the jungle on the next episode of Let's Play Rain Slick 4. Catch you later!